what's going on guys before we go ahead and solve problems on mosfets let's look at the key informations we need in order to solve mosfet problems now let's look at the new symbol here we have the new symbol for the n channel mosfet that's this is the gate and this is i train and this is a source and if you look at the p mosfet this is gate source and train okay now let's look at the various region various operation regions for mosfets so there are three different regions. We can have cutoff region, linear region, and saturation or active region. Now for n MOSFET, in order to be cutoff region, V just has to be less than or equal to V threshold. In that condition, IDS is equal to zero. IDS is I train, okay. And for P MOSFET, VSG has to be less than or equal to V threshold magnitude. In that condition, ISD is going to be equal to zero. Now if you look at the linear region for n MOSFET, V just has to be greater than V, v threshold and vds has to be less than or equal to vgs minus v threshold okay in that condition we can use this equation ids that is strain current that is equal to mu n c o x w over l vgs minus v threshold times vds minus vds square divided by 2 okay for p mosfet in order to be linear region this vsg has to be le greater than v threshold magnitude in that condition we can use this equation that's ISD is equal to mu p co c o x w over l v s d minus v threshold magnitude times v s d minus v s d square. Now, in order to be saturation or active region, the condition has to be v g s has to be greater than v threshold, and v d s has to be greater than v g s minus v threshold. In that condition, we can use this equation that train current is going to be half mu n c o x w times w l times VGS minus V threshold whole square and for P MOSFET in order to be saturation or active region VSG has to be greater than V threshold VSD has to be greater than VSG and uh, V threshold magnitude okay in that condition we can use ISD equal to half mu P C O X W over L times VSG minus V threshold magnitude whole square now MOSFET act as a variable resistor okay so here you can see in this uh, given circuit this gate is connected to the connected to the train so this is gate and this one is connected to the train so it acts as a two terminal device okay and also we have active we can calculate the active resistance in the graph you can see this region is active region so active resistance can be calculated using this formula rds this train resistance that can be calculated using VDS that's active over ID active. Now if you look at the first position, position A, we have 15 voltage and the current, active current at that point is 3 milliampere. So 15 divided by 3 milliampere gives us the train, train resistance that is 5 kilo ohm. And for point B, you can see this is 10 voltage divided by 1.6 milliampere. That gives us 6.25 kilo ohm. And another most important circuit is CMOS. CMOS is complementary MOS. There are two different MOS connected to a circuit. Like here you can see M1 and M2. M1 represents P MOSFET and M2 represents this N MOSFET. Okay. And the most important like uh, the extra, these C MOSFETs are extremely useful because they are extremely low power consumption. They are used for extremely low power cons consumption, right? And this is very famous device, like famous circuit. It is almost used in every digital, most of the digital circuits. Now, here we have equal and opposite values. Like if you look at the circuit, this is equal and opposite values of VGS threshold and VGS on, ID on, and so on. Okay. And that's all we have to know about MOSFET in order to solve the problems on MOSFET. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.